Get five coffins ready. Hey everyone, welcome to my guide for Heimdall. Heim is easily the most unique hunter in the entire game, and is seen in the ADC role. Build wise though, Heim doesn't do anything all that spicy. He tends to gravitate to whatever the hunter meta build is at that time, happily taking on power and attack speed builds alike. Relics wise as per usual with the hunter, just speeds and ages here, and with your first shard being wing shard. Heim is a strange one, right out of the gate with his hit chain. Heim strikes twice normally, then winds up for a large third and final strike. Already odd for a hunter, but that's not all. Those first two hits actually hit in an AoE as well. But as I'm sure you can already tell, Heim is easily the slowest attack speed out of all the hunters to counteract this. He does, though, also have the highest basic attack damage, and a passive which increases this even more. For every enemy Heimdall currently has vision on, he gains 2% power, meaning he can have up to a whopping 10% power if he sees all enemies, and Heimdall will maintain vision on any enemies for 4 seconds even if they have the life vision of his teammates. So to clear up what this actually means, Heimdall doesn't need line of sight on an enemy for this passive to activate. If an enemy is revealed by a teammate on the other side of the map, it'll count. If an enemy is walking over a ward a million miles away, it'll count. It's a weird passive to say the least, and something most of the time doesn't really feel like you can play around, it's just up to chance. But Heimdall is able to play around it thanks to his first ability. Heimdall fires a projectile into the air. This projectile granting a decent but not huge area of vision for Heimdall. The vision portion of this ability has too many applications to even count. Checking over walls to see if enemies are on buffs, checking the health of objectives as enemies do them, popping it as soon as someone leaps over a wall to see what direction they're taking, and so on. This portion of the ability, like a lot of other abilities I've covered like this before, its use of granting vision doesn't come up too often, but you never want to neglect your ability to use it to grant yourself vision either. You may want to keep that projectile in the air for longer though, thanks to the second portion of this ability. Upon reactivating this ability, Heimdall will fire that original projectile down in an AoE at a huge range. Keep in mind that you can hold that projectile up in the air, and so long as you don't run out of the ability's duration, you'll always be able to refire the ability no matter how far away you get from where it was originally cast. Although, the further you are, the longer it will take to cast. And this, along with the projectile itself having a decent damage size AoE, makes it extremely flexible. But the way it's most flexible is as a psychological pressure tool. You may have already noticed that you can use your AoE basic attacks to wave suppressant and also easily keep the wave backed up, so you want to slap this on top of a bunch of wave for easy clear. Or, you can begin basic attacking the wave, pop the projectile in the air, and keep it in the air as a sort of scare tactic on your opponent, making them wonder if you'll use it to clear the wave or poke on them, because again, it's pretty easy to hit, and does a boatload of damage, and either way, Heim can easily rely on his basic attacks to clear the wave. Don't forget too that you can cancel that long third basic attack in his hit chain by activating this ability, then basic attack while it's in the air, and then you can reactivate it mid basic attack for some really hard hitting and hard to avoid damage. Canceling the third hit of Heim's basic attack chain will become a common theme, like with Heim's second ability. Heim becomes immune to knockups and fires a very long, wide cone AoE in front of him, dealing damage every half second and slowing all enemies hit. When the ability ends or is cancelled, he fires an AoE around himself, his AoE dealing burst damage and knocking back all enemies hit. A very unique and weird ability, but as I'm sure you've already guessed, it's mostly used for that final AoE knockback that, remember, you can use at any time by cancelling the ability. When using the ability aggressively, clearly the idea here is to use that slow in the massive cone to close the gap, then cancel the ability as soon as you arrange for the knockup and start slapping. This is mostly true, but just imagine yourself trying to run max range at someone while their support is right there, and it's not going to work. So this tends to be used later on in fights during around the midpoint when most of the hard CC has already been used, so Heim can't be cancelled out of this ability, or just save it till the very end for a completely unavoidable slow and damage over time then using it defensively can be a bit more tricky. Heimdall does have a movement ability, but it's, um, different to say the least. So sometimes this will be your only way to peel yourself out. And most people jumping on you are going to know this, so unfortunately it's case by case basis depending on which god is diving you. But the ability is absolutely incredible for self peel and for simply interrupting enemies during trades if you know when to time it. For instance, you can cancel a mirror freeze, Thor hammer, etc. But it takes a good amount of practice to time, plus you have to do it while under the stress of playing, so it's not easy. But it's something you have to get right if you want to excel as Heim. Just like his third ability. Heimdall lays down a portal, and when he casts the ability again, he will place down the other end to that portal. Then after that, castings of the ability will cycle between that first portal and second portal. When Heim enters a portal, it will charge up. This charge up time depending on how far the portals are from one another, and once he begins teleporting, he is completely immune. Although, if Heim is hard CC'd at any time during the charge up process, the charge will be cancelled until Heim is not CC'd anymore. So yes, this does mean that if you use your purification beads, you can still teleport even though CC has technically hit you. These portals of course have an internal cooldown, and you guessed it, just like the charge time, the cooldown is increased the further the portals were from each other when Heim teleported, and they are clearly shown as on cooldown since they become little, um, eggs? You can still place the portals down though, hm, what a way you could do that for. 
Well, more on that later. Firstly, using the portals themselves. So it's very tempting just to want to place one portal on your tower before backing, then use another portal on base once you've backed to teleport to lane. And you don't want to do that. The cooldown is absolutely beyond ridiculous, and Heimdall only has one other movement ability, and guess what? It's his ultimate. So if you get caught, you have to use your most potent tool in your kit just for a chance to live. So instead, once your support starts roaming mid, usually around level 5, you want to keep one portal under tower and one near the middle of the lane. Your portal placement in this second portal here is of course completely fluid as you can place them literally anywhere but this is a good baseline to start with. Then as the game goes on, you want to do the same sort of idea. Place one portal in a safe area, say deep in your jungle or under a tower, then once you need to get out, portal at your feet, and remember, the closer you can get the portals without killing you, the better. And of course adjust the portals as needed if you for instance want to fight a fire giant and move on to sieging a tower or something. But what about in the early game though? Well that's partly where the significance of still being able to use this ability even when it's on cooldown comes in. Since Heim's basic attacks are so slow, and the ability's cooldown is also very low, you can easily place down a portal to cancel out that hilariously slow third basic attack from coming out to get some extremely fast AoE basic attacks out there for some excellent wave pressure. This mechanic is an absolute must as Heim in the early game, both for damage on minions and gods since remember, more basic attacks means more damage. Until your attack speed hits around 1.8, this is the best way to pump out basic attack damage as Heim, but you shouldn't get too carried away with it. It should really only be used very early on in waves for some extra pressure, then relegated to only being used on all inning. Whether that be in a one-on-one -on -one in the dual lane, on objectives like gold fury or in the structures like towers, and only ever use it in the late game if you 100% absolutely have to, or 100% absolutely can because you're steamrolling them, but you get my point. While learning high myself, I definitely found myself overusing this, not only draining my mana, but it certainly got me killed too. So you gotta find a good balance between using this to pump out basic attacks, but also make sure you leave yourself the option to use the literal best movement ability in the game when it's allowed to go off. Speaking of one of the best when it's allowed to go off, Heim's ultimate. Heim becomes CC immune in dashes, this dash stopping in the first enemy god hit. When Heim collides with the god, he stuns them. At this point, the enemy god is still able to use purification beads to stop what happens next, but keep in mind they'll still take the damage. If the stun completes, the enemy god is shot through the realms and take damage as they pass through the realms, and eventually lands ahead of wherever Heimdall was looking when he launched them into the air. So to get that power out of the way first, you choose where they land by flicking your camera after you collide with them. Then you can freely move your camera, and you pretty much always want to do a 180 and have them land behind you. But the question remains, who do you use this on and when? Well it's actually quite good for self heal as you might imagine. So first and foremost, during fights you want to keep it in the pocket for that eventuality. Of course this works in more ways than one, since you can either use the CC mean dash to get away, or use your ultimate on say their jungler who dove on you in the backline, setting up your team for a kill. That said though, it's mostly seen as a big finishing move, in tandem with its first ability. You want to trade with them until they're around half HP. Go for this ultimate, and as I'm sure you guessed, you can easily combo this with your first ability once they land for some mega burst damage after they've already had a huge high damage ultimate. That's perfect for trades in the early and mid game, but late game it actually becomes even simpler. You can save it as an escape tool and only really ever use it to finish off kills or in order to chase down targets, as in if you're already winning a team fight and you're looking to chase down targets. This is the perfect way to snack someone and steamroll them. In my Najra guide, I mentioned that his ultimate could be used to remove key targets from the fight. And while Heim can do this, it's not really advised since, as I've been mentioning, despite his 3's potency, this really is his best escape, and you want to save it as such until you don't need to escape anymore. Then it's all about the damage. Speaking of damage, some combos with Heimdall. Basic twice, one, basic attack with the reactivation. Basic twice, one, reactivate, two, getting close to keep comboing or keep your distance. Basic twice, three, basic twice, one, reactivate, two, again, get close to chase down or just keep your distance. Basic, ult, when they land, start prepping your two, fire the knockup, chase with your basic attack three combos, and of course your burst ability. Basic twice, three, basic twice, two, start closing the gap. Here you want to cancel early to catch them off guard, but if you're confident, you can keep it going. Whenever your two ends here, ult, then prep your one for when they land, chasing with basic attacks into the three. For barely leveling, you want your one at level one, your two at level two, and your three at level three. From there, you want to max your one, your two, then your three, leveling the ultimate whenever you can. As you can tell, I have point skip at level 8 so I can put a level into my 1 and my ultimate at level 9, but as always, this is just personal preference. Heimdall is an absolutely excellent god who has been seen as a high level pick for some time now. His lane presence is undeniable, and he has some of the best 1v1s in the game, and his safety once you get accustomed to his third ability is second to none. 
Heimdall falls apart only in one aspect and it's the exact one you think he does. He is slow. Against massive amounts of bursts on the enemy team, sometimes there's not a whole lot Heimdall can do to answer that. Don't get me wrong, he can one-shot you very quickly in the mid to late game, but to get off the ground he is very slow, and if the enemy team plays around your 3 optimally, he can be a very easy target for 3-man ganks. And while his pressure is great, all some more aggressive guardians have to do is get in your face and there's not a whole lot you can do. Luckily this season, there isn't nearly as much snowballing in the dual lane as it was in Season 9, so if you just power through to your second or third item, no matter what happens in the early game, you will do a million billion damage in that mid to late game, and Heim is just a god worth picking every time he's picked. That's all I have on Heimdall for now. Thanks for watching. Your portal placement in the second portal here, <coughs> Heim becomes CC mute. <coughs> in my Nasha guide, I mentioned that the... <coughs> Speaking of damage, some com some com speaking of damage, some combos with items.